In this series of lectures, we introduce some basic and important concepts in calculus. As entry-level course, we often adopt approaches that are intuitively clear, but might not be mathematically rigorous. In particular, we will not use the famous epsilon delta language here. In this video, let's start from the limit of sequences. We are going to demonstrate the concept of limit of sequences using several simple examples. Okay. Let's look at example one. This is the so-called harmonic sequence, one over n. Uh, this is the, uh, the way to represent this sequence. And the first one is one. The second number is one half, this is one third, and this is one, one, of one fourth, and the next one is one five, and so on. Now, what we want to find is we want to identify the long-term trend of this sequence. We want to see where does this sequence go when this index n gets larger and larger. And uh, that is we call it the limit, all right? Uh, well, in order to uh, see that, let's, uh, let's plot these numbers on the uh, real axis. All right, so let's write here. Say this is the point is zero. So we start from this is the one, right? So the first number in the sequence. And the second number will be one half. It's right here. So we move from first number to the second number, one half. Uh, the third number is one third, right? So this, the third number is one third. Okay, so we put the one third here. So this will be one third. So from one half, uh, move to one third. And then the fourth number is one fourth, so one quarter, move to one fourth. And then we have one fifth and then such, so on and so on, right? Okay, now when you look at the sequence, it's kind of clear. Eventually, the other numbers are positive, but uh, meanwhile, they approach to the number zero, right? So here, what we have is a decreasing sequence, and they, the sequence in long run, it approaches the number zero. Okay, so we get this one approaches the number zero. And then we say the limit is zero. Okay, so they just, we define it. We just define the limit as n goes to infinity. So as the index uh, gets larger, the whole sequence approaches, or we say tends to the number zero. And this we call the limit. And this is how we uh, write it. Okay, now this example is it's simple, right? It's intuitively very clear. Uh, if you look at the other ways, okay, so this is one of n, right? So n is the uh, uh, denominator, and uh, this is a reciprocal of n. We know from um, uh, elementary math, if the uh, denominator gets larger, the reciprocal gets uh, smaller, right? Eventually it goes to zero. Okay, now let's look at the second example. The second example is we call it alternating sequence. Now this sequence, it's kind of similar to the previous one. Now the main difference is here the sign changes. It's uh, the first one is negative one, and the second one is plus one half. The third one is negative one third. So it's minus plus minus plus. So that's what we call alternating. Okay, and then of course we know this sequence is not decreasing or increasing because it's alternating. Let's see what is the long term trend of the sequence. Let's draw it. And we draw, this is the real axis, right? And here is the zero, okay? Now it is start from the first point. Uh, it's still, it's a uh, negative one, okay? Start from negative one. So this is the first one. And what's the next? Uh, next is, will be one half, right? So this will be one half. So this will be next one, one half. And where's the, uh, the third one? It's negative one third. So it's on the left hand side of zero. Okay, so this is negative one third. And then we have, this is 104, right? It's 104. Okay, and then we have, uh, this is uh, negative one fifth. And then we here we have one of six. And okay, such and such, right? back and forth. When you look at um, uh, the sequence, Although, as we said, this is neither increasing or decreasing because it's jumping around between positive and negative. However, if you look at the behavior of the sequence, this as a whole, the sequence still approaches zero, right? Approaches zero from two 
directions of a hole, the still the long-term behavior is the sequence goes to zero, right? Okay, so then we say the limit. We still write, we say, all right, so this sequence has a limit. So the limit as n goes to infinity, so the index gets larger, or you can put a plus sign. So this is a negative one to the power n, and one of n, this one equals zero. So the limit of this sequence is still a zero. Uh, example three. Now let's look at uh, the following sequence. Here, uh, the numerator is 2n minus one, and the denominator is n plus 10. Now, so we want to find, again, we want to find the long-term trend of this sequence on a CLK where eventually the sequence will tend to or approach to. Uh, this is not uh, completely obvious because both the numerator and denominator, they increase, right, as n uh, increases. Uh, so what are we going to do? We say, okay, suppose if this is not so clear to you, say, okay, why not? We just let, write our several numbers, right? All right, so let's do it. So f n equal to one, uh, this is one over 11. Uh, how about n equal to two? I just direct the calculation. So this will be three over 13. And when n equals to uh, four, right, n equal to three, uh, this will be uh, five uh, over uh, 13, right? And okay, of course, we can keep writing out the numbers. Uh, one, one thing you can see is those things, they are increasing, right? Uh, well, it's say we say because we want to find the uh, long term trend. So that means we want to see when n gets say very large, what will happen. Uh, for example, let's say n equals to 100, right? So what do we have? n equals to 100, then we have the number, we just plug n equals to 100, and we will have it's 199, right? Divided by 110. Let's see what do we have. You calculate this number, you see this is approximately 1.809. Okay. Anyway, uh, if you try uh, those bunch of numbers, you can uh, you can you can somehow guess this sequence is increasing, right? This is increasing, and eventually somehow probably looks like it will approach it will approach the number two. Okay. So this is what we guess. We say okay. So this is what we guess. The limit of this sequence, as n goes to infinity. 2n minus 1 over n plus 10. In long run, eventually, this sequence will approach to the number two, although it will never be number two, but it would get close, very, very, very close to the number two when n increases. All right. Now, we want to verify it uh, in a more rigorous way. Or we say in a more convincing way, right? Or we say more convincing. Instead of we say, okay, more convincing way. When we use the numbers to try to identify uh, the limit, which is uh, very elementary, but meanwhile, is very inefficient because sometimes you have to plot many values of n and to identify the number. And sometimes probably you're never able to identify the limit just by plotting numbers. All right, so let's use other methods. Okay, let's say if we use uh, method one, try to see it. Uh, we want to um, um, rewrite this. Okay, so let's look at 2n minus one over n plus 10, right? Because you see here you have n on the numerator and denominator. We try to get rid of n. We try to simplify it. So one way I can do, so method one, so this method one, one way I can do is because this is n plus 10, I can uh, rewrite uh, 2n minus one. So this one, I can rewrite this as equals two times n plus 10 because I just uh, try to um, uh, match this and then uh, minus uh, 21, right? So that's what I have. Okay, so this is n over 10 and this is n plus 10. And what do we have? Let's see. So then we have uh, here, we just get this one, we just get a two, right? So this one go two and a minus and 21 over n plus 10, right? N plus 10. And then you see, uh, what do we say? This two, this guy is fixed, right? Stay there. What is changing 
is this part. But for this part, we see, okay, so this is basically very similar to the harmonic sequence. Uh, 21, the numerator, 21, okay, so this guy is fixed, right? He just stayed there. Now, what, what changes is the uh, uh, denominator, n plus 10. And it's okay, when n gets very large, the uh, denominator also gets very large. Therefore, we expect a similar, like the harmonic sequence, we assume it's okay, we know this guy will just become very, very small, right? It's, it's, it's a positive, but it's very, very small, will be very close to zero, approach zero. Okay, so then the whole thing will approach to number two, right? Okay, so this is more convincing way to look at it. Or we can use another way to see it. So this is method one. Now let's look at method two. Right, let's look at method two. Uh, method, again, I'm going to somehow simplify this. So we say, uh, not simplify this, but uh, more precisely, I will say, I'm going to rewrite this expression into a um, form that is more obvious or more apparent to us what will happen in the long run. All right, so I'm going to let, let's do it. So I have this 2n minus 1 over n plus 10. I'm going to uh, divide this n on the uh, numerator and the denominator, right? So this does not change because I just divide this thing number uh, for both of them. So what I get, I will get uh, the first one is will be 2 minus 1 of n, and this will be 1 plus 10 over n, right? 10 of n. Okay. And then you say, why this is, uh, this is better than the uh, original form? The reason is now we see, look, we say, okay, look at this guy, right? This is, you say, well, this is harmonic sequence. And we know when n gets large, this guy is just, will be very, very, very close to zero, right? And this is similar, it's just 10 times the uh, harmonic sequence. And it's the same thing when 10 over n, 10 is fixed, but n gets very, very large. And then if you look at the reciprocal, so we say, okay, it's kind of clear. This is also will go to zero. So the whole thing, you say, all right, we expect the whole thing. We just go to two minus zero, one plus zero, and which is what? Which is exactly two. Okay. All right. So here I present two ways. So eventually we can conclude this is correct. This is indeed correct, right? Uh, by using these two methods, which I hope I have convinced you the limit of this one is indeed two. So when I say limit, just means as n gets larger and larger, you will see the whole sequence will approach the number zero, will become, will become very, very close to the number zero, right? Okay. Now, example four. Here, look at this sequence. Uh, this is the square root of n plus one minus the square root of n. Now this number is even less obvious than the previous one, because when we look at this uh, sequence, okay, let's look at the first one, right? So, okay, so when n equal to one, there's just square root two minus one, n equal to two will be square root three minus the square root two, when n equal to three will be square root four, which is two minus square root three. Okay, all right. Uh, then we say, okay, we try to find the, uh, the long term chain, but here, here the, the point is, of course, you say, oh yeah, let's just use calculator and to find the square root thing and try to see the long-term chain. Yes, yeah, so we can do that. But again, this is just not uh, um, very efficient, right? You have to use, have a calculator to do the, um, uh, the square root thing. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we say, okay, so are we able to um, uh, find a nice way, a simpler way, a more efficient way to find uh, the limit, right, to find the limit. Okay, here, uh, the main difficulty is because you see when n gets very large, so n goes to infinity. So when I use this notation, that just means when n gets very, very large, right, and increases. But both this will, will increase, right? Both of this will increase, uh, increase to be very large, like go to infinity. But then you have very large, and it's very large. What will happen eventually? Right? It's not so clear. Okay, so then we are going to uh, perform a trick. The trick is this. I'm going to, because this is over one, right? So this is over one. I just add a artificial add a one here. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to multiply uh, the square root of this plus this and times the square root 
I just multiply by the same thing, right? So this is uh, this is a trick that sometimes you see in math computation uh, stuff. We try to uh, uh, this is one of the typical methods. We try to simplify the expression of when you have a difference or a square of things, right? We just multiply, it's kind of conjugate to uh, to get rid of the square of sign. Okay, all right. So that's what we have now. If you remember, all right. Okay, let's do this. That equal. I just multiply by the same thing. Now. Uh, let's recall this. The square root, what is the square root of A minus square root of B times the square root of A plus square root of B, right? So this is okay. We just got A squared minus the square root of B squared, right? So that's what we have, which is A minus B, right? It's, it's a minus B. So it's got A times this, B times this, but you have the mixed term, which is canceled, okay? All right. So from here, what do we get? We say, okay, so that's what we have. The numerator, the denominator is this plus the square root n, and uh, the uh, um, the numerator becomes one. The numerator becomes uh, m plus one because that's the squares. So the square root of this squared minus the square root n squared. Okay, what's that? This is what's this? What's this? This the, this is just m plus one, right? So square root is is um, is removed. And this one is n. So okay, so then this one will be one. Eventually, what do we get? By this, we say, okay, so this one is just equals. We say, okay, so this whole thing, it just equals here. It's one over the square root of n plus one plus the square root of n. Okay, so we say this one just equals by by performing this trick, we find this it just equals one over the square root of n plus one square plus the square root of n. Now it's clear what should be the limit. You so say why? Because look, the numerator is one fixed, does not change, but the denominator is the square root of n and plus the is the plus. Now it's plus. It's no longer minus it's plus. So square root of n plus one. And we know intuitively, right? Intuitively, it's clear. Oh, okay, if n gets very large, the square root of n is also gets very large. Although it's not as quick as n, right? For example, if n is uh, is um, ten thousand, the square root of n will be one hundred, right? But anyway, it's uh, I hope it's kind of clear to you. When n gets very large, the whole thing will just gets very large, right? Will be very large. Okay, and then we know. All right, so this one, the numerator fixed, the denominator, will, and as n gets large, this will just go to will become very large. We say like let's say go to infinity, so it means get very 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 large. So eventually, we expect the whole thing will just go to what? We just go to zero, right? We just go to zero. So the conclusion is what? The conclusion is the limit. The limit of this sequence, as n goes to infinity, the square root of n plus one minus the square root of n, this one is zero. And the reason is we are, we, we are, we are able to establish this identity and it becomes kind of clear. It will go to zero, right? Example five. Here we have the sequence, which is n over to the n. The numerator is n, and the denominator is the exponential two to the n. And again, we want to find the long-term chain of the sequence. In other words, we want to see where the sequence will go when n gets larger and larger. Uh, well, as, as before, we say, let's write out several numbers and try to get some idea, some sense about the limit, right? All right, so let's say if n equal to one, this is clear. Okay, so just one half and n equal to two is two over, it's two over two squared. This is again, it's one half, okay? And when n equal to three, so what do we have? It's three over eight. When n equal to four, it will be four over, which is two to the four, which is uh, 104, right? Which is 104. Okay, when n equal to five, we know it's five over 32. Okay, so here we have uh, the first several numbers is one half and one half and three over eight and 104 and five over 32. Uh, if you write out more numbers, I think it will become clear the, uh, the sequence is decreasing and it will go to zero. But of course, it will never be zero because it's always positive but it will just become more and more like 
zero, smaller, smaller. Okay, so that's what we get. We say, okay, so here is again uh, our guess. So this is our guess. The guess is the limit as n goes to infinity, n over two to the n, this shall be zero. Now, this is consistent with our intuition because um, the numerator n, although that one also we know as n increases, n increases, but the denominator two to the n, this is exponential. And it's kind of expected that exponential shall go faster than the number n, right? Okay, all right. So now what we want to do is we say, okay, can we make this uh, kind of rigorous or how can we um, uh, prove it, right? More convincing way. Okay, so let's do this. So what we want to do is uh, let's, so this is what we guess the limit. We want to verify, verify uh, the limit, the limit by uh, more convincing ways. Okay, by more convincing ways. Now in order to, in other words, we want to more rigorously verify the following fact. So here's the fact we want to verify. Uh, exponential always uh, in, uh, grows faster, not maybe I should just say closed in general, grow, grows faster. faster than polynomial. So this is the general principle. Exponential grows faster than polynomial. I'll see, okay, now how we verify this? We want doing a more convincing way. How we do that? Uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to use the, uh, the binomial formula. Okay, so here I'm gonna use this uh, binomial form, binomial, binomial formula. Uh, let's really call the binomial formula. So what's the binomial formula? The binomial formula says a plus b to the power n. This one is the summation, right? k from zero to n. So here's the uh, binomial coefficients. It's n choose k and a to the power k and b to the power n minus k. Okay, so this is the binomial formula. And this is what we know from high school math, right? Okay. And then in particular, if I say, okay, so if R plus one, if one is say A equal to R, B is one, then we get uh, um, K equals zero to the N and N choose K, right? I get N choose K. Uh, this will be R to the power K and the B is one, right? So one is regardless what powers are there, it's just one, okay? And in particular, if I say, hey, uh, what if the R is one, right? If I could one, if I equal to one, then we would just get one plus one to the power n. This will be the summation, k from zero to n and n to the k, right? m to the k, okay. And then the, this one we will just get, we say, okay, if I can just write out the first term will be just one and the next term will be n. So the n is one and this will be uh, one half n times n minus one and the, 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 right? So the last one is one plus one. Okay, it repeats itself. And this is just n choose two, right? Just n choose two. All right. So then we just get this is two to the n. We get this uh, equality, right? Get this equality to the n. Now, when we look at this, you see, okay, um, from here, what can we get? Well, in particular, from here, we can just get. Let me let me erase those things. From here, let's see. Um, if I just look at two to the n, so here we have many times one and n. Uh, let's just let's just choose the third one, uh, n times n minus one over two, which is n n two. Okay, so what do we have? What I have is two n. This one is bigger than this one, so n choose two, which is two to the n times n minus one, right? Okay. Now, why this useful? Well, if this is true, right? So we say, okay, we agree this is true just from this uh, binomial uh, formula. And then I will have n over two to the n. This of course is always positive, but meanwhile, it's less than n. I replace two to the n by this guy, right? It's less than n times n minus one over two. Uh, let's simplify this and cancel with this, which we'll get is two over n minus one. All right, so what, what's the, uh, what, we, what do we got here? So from here, we got 
n over 2 to the n. This is less than 2 to the n minus 1. Meanwhile, of course, this guy is always positive. And now you say, OK, well then, if uh, that's the case, we should say, OK, we get this one will just be as n. You say, what happens as n gets very large? This you see, this again, this is like the harmonic sequence, right? The, the, uh, the numerator two is fixed and the denominator is n minus one. So this one goes to, that gets very large, gets very large, and the reciprocal, of course, we expect it goes down to zero, right? So they say, okay, so this one will just go zero. Uh, so of course, then, then this force, this guy, because this guy is even smaller, right? So this guy is even smaller. So this guy will also goes to zero. So here we, um, by using the binomial formula, we, we obtained this inequality, right? Binomial formula gives us this inequality. Now, by this inequality, then it is because apparent as n as n increases, right? It goes to infinity, then this sequence n over 2n, and it goes down to zero, right? It goes down to zero. Now, as a principle, now we say, okay, similarly, we can show that. Uh, if you look at other terms, because here you see we only use the uh, term. If you use other terms, similarly, so similarly we can show that so this is I leave an exercise. So similarly, we have the limit as n goes to infinity, n to the power k, regardless of what it is, as long as you fixed. Uh, to the two to the n, this one is still zero. As long as you fix the power k, k could be uh, any whatever one, two, three, four, whatever it is. As long as this fix the power, the limit is zero. So this is uh, what what he says here: exponential always grows faster than uh, than polynomial. Now, or you say, uh, is this number two uh, very special? No, actually, uh, that it does not. We can, um, we can use any number. So, okay, I can use any number, say r equals 1.1, um, and then you still, you will get uh, n to the power k, and this is 1.1 uh, to the power, k, power n, this limit, as n goes to uh, infinity, this is still will be zero. But again, the exponential. So as long as number is bigger than one, then the exponential grows faster than the, uh, the polynomial. Okay, so in the previous uh, example, we learned a very important principle. That is, the exponential always grows faster than polynomial. Well, in mathematics, uh, more precisely, we can express in terms of the limit. Just the limit, if you look at the limit of the ratio, uh, the, the, uh, the, denom the denominator is the exponential, and the numerator is polynomial. All right, so he has n to the power k, and a k could be um, any number, any uh, natural number, one, two, three, four, so that just means the term on polynomial. And r to the n, this is exponential, and the true for any r which is bigger than one. So the limit is zero. So for example, you can choose r to be two, or you can choose r to be 1.1, or r to be 1.01, or even 1.001. It doesn't matter. As long as the number r is bigger than one, the exponential is always close faster. In other words, eventually the exponential term r to the n will surpass the polynomial term m to the power k when the n is fairly large. Okay, now uh, let's, let's uh, look at the next example. Here we say, okay, uh, we want to find, here we look at the sequence, the sequence is n, uh, the nth root of n, right? Another way, so this is n to the power one of n, which is the same as we take the nth root of the number m. And we want to find what is the long-term chain, or we say what is the limit of this sequence. So what does this sequence approach to as the number n increases, or we say when the number n goes to infinity, right? This is we call long-term chain. All right, now, um, here, the, uh, the difficulty is, on one hand, we find, we say, okay, you look, the, uh, the exponent goes to zero, but on the other hand, the base 
and it goes to uh, to infinity, right? Gets larger and larger. So if we have something like, for example, if we have something like two to the power one of n, or we say this is uh, the nth root of two, right? For this one, if I say, hey, what happens as n goes to infinity, right? When the n gets larger and larger. And this we say, well, because this one goes to zero and two is fixed. So this will just goes to, to uh, we'll just go to a two to the zero, which is what, right? This is clear if the base is fixed. But here the trouble is the base is not fixed. The base itself is n and this one goes to uh, infinity, right? It gets large. So it's not clear. Well, it's not clear uh, what is the limit of the sequence. So as usual, we say, okay, why not? We try um, a bunch of numbers. So when we try different numbers, so this is when n equal to one, which is one. This is n equal to two, which is 1.11. 1, uh, 1, 1. Of course, this is not the exact value. We take the, um, the number um, up to the third digit, uh, decimal digit. And this is n equal to three. And then this one is n equals to 100. And then this is n equals to 1000. Um, if we look at uh, these numbers and we observe two things. Number one, we find uh, the sequence is, um, is decreasing, right? It's kind of, it's decreasing, eventually it's decreasing. So this sequence is decreasing. We find, okay, so the sequence one of n, this is eventually is decreasing, right? Because it gets smaller and smaller. And number two, it looks like, you see, if n is 1,000, which is already quite a large, right? Then it's just somehow um, tell us what is the final destination of the sequence. Well, if it looks like uh, this one eventually will go to one, right? So this is what we guess. Okay, so here's the guess, right? We guess, guess. We say the limit as n goes to infinity, the sequence n to one, this is one, okay? Now, the question is, how can we make a convincing argument, right? So that's what we need to do, okay? So how we find a way that is uh, more convincing, right? That is more convincing. Uh, okay, so first of all, we know, obviously, this sequence, this is uh, bigger than one, right? For any number, this is, has to be bigger than one because n is the number in the one, you take n is the bigger than one. And number two, we say, suppose it's okay, I choose a number. Let's say I choose a number which I is 1.001, right? Just a number which is bigger than one, but it's very close to one, right? 1.01. 1 .01. And let's recall the principle, right? Let's recall this principle. It says, uh, eventually, if I have the base R is bigger than one, eventually this will surpass the exponential. Okay, so we say, all right. So here then we have eventually, Eventually, the exponential, so 1.001 .001 to the power n, so this one, when I say expansion means when n is very large, right? When n becomes very large, so they're going to surpass it. So the exponential is going to surpass this n. So this is the exponential, All right? So expansion is going to surpass the n. Now let's take the m's on both sides. So from here, so okay, let's take the m's root. We will get 1.001 .001 will be bigger than m take the m root. Ah, then we find, okay, great. So that means eventually when I say, I just fix the number 1.001, uh, this is a uh, number is bigger than one. It ends very close to one. And eventually the sequence will go below this number, right? So the sequence will, oh, will go, eventually will go below this number. So regardless what it is, as long as it's a number that is bigger than one, it will, go below it. But on the other hand, we know this is always bigger than one, right? It's always bigger than one. So we can say, okay, what basically happens is this, right? We say, okay, um, here, let's say we have, uh, if we draw the picture, what do we have? We say, okay, let's see, we have this is, uh, this is zero, right? And here is, this is number one. Okay, what happens is, uh, you always, we say, okay, so eventually what happens is uh, we start from say, this is the number, it start from one, and then you have slide uh, bigger than one, but as long as, but it will go down, the, 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 right? It's bigger than one, but eventually 
it will approach to one, right? Because it will go below any number that is beginning one. Okay, so that's what happens. And this verifies the limit of this is indeed is one. Example seven. Now let's consider the sequence uh, one plus one of n to the power n. So here, um, when you look at the base, which is one plus one of n, we know this one of n part, this is just harmonic sequence. And uh, as we said before, this one will just go to zero, right? When n gets very large, it'll be like zero. Okay, so the base will be like one. However, the power n gets larger and larger and it goes to infinity. So it's not very clear uh, what will eventually happen, right? You have a base, that's more like, a, uh, that's, um, uh, that is um, when more like one, but you have the power that it gets very, very large. All right, if you combine the two things, it's just not so clear. So what do we do is, okay, let's try, try uh, several numbers to see what happened. So this is, if you, if you plug n equal to one into here, right? So in one, so that's just, you get a two. Uh, if you plug n equal to two, you get uh, 2.25. You see, if n equal to two, so you get a what? You get a one over one plus two and the power two, right? So this is 2.25. And then of course, you can also plug n equal to three and this is approximately equal to this number. It's not exactly, but approximately a 2.3.8. And this is n equal to four, this is n equal to five, and this is n equals 10, and this is n equals 100, and this is n equals to 1000 approximately. We just choose the first three uh, decimal digits. Now, when we observe uh, the numbers here, so 2, 2.25, and all the way to 2.716, um, because this is already 1,000. So I think we uh, this already captures um, uh, those basic features of the sequence. All right, so we observe three things, observation. Observation, right? By those data, we see, okay, so first one, uh, it looks like the sequence one of n to the power n, this as n increases, this is increasing. So this is increasing sequence, increasing. And number two, uh, it looks like uh, this one is always uh, no less than two, right? If you look at those numbers, but meanwhile, uh, it's increasing, but does not increase all the way to, uh, to, to, uh, to as, as large as you want. Okay, so when we look at the sequence, we say, okay, when it's 1,000 is 2.7.1 and 100, 2.7.04, it looks like it's not going to uh, surpass three, right? So it's okay. So this one, uh, it looks like it's going to be less than three. All right, now combine all those things together. If we try to uh, draw the picture, it's okay. So that's what we have, right? So let's say this is zero and this is three. Okay, and this is the uh, the number two. Uh, what happens in the sequence, right? So you start from the first one is two, the first one is two, and then you have 2.25 uh, and all the numbers. Okay, so this is the sequence. It's increasing, but it's less than two. So intuitively, if you have such a sequence where so it's increasing, but you have a, you have a, you have a cut off, uh, it will it will uh, we expect it will eventually approach to a number, to the limit, right? It eventually approach to this number. Okay. And the question is, what is this number? So here, let me see again. From this picture, we know intuitively it's going to approach a number because it's increasing and it's always on the other side of three, right? It's going to approach a number. So which number? Uh, the answer is uh, we, we do not have like simple way, like uh, uh, a fraction or a square of things to describe the number. The limit is E the base of natural log reason. All right, so here is, this one is what? What's the limit? The limit is the number E. Okay, so here we have is the limit. As N goes to infinity, the limit of the sequence equals to the number E. So this is one way to define the number E. So what is the number E? So we can say, oh, number E is just the limit of the sequence, one plus one of N to the N. Now this number is very important. This number E, we know this is a very important number in mathematics. And uh, uh, approximately, if you try to write uh, all the digits out, 
we, we cannot, it does not have a pattern. So this irrational, so first of all, we know this guy is an irrational, this guy is an irrational number. That means uh, it cannot be written as the ratio of two integers. In terms of decimals means, uh, if you look at all the decimal digits, it does not have a pattern. It is not repeating, right? Okay, so it's like 2.718, uh, 2.8, 1.828, right? It's not repeating. So this is the, uh, uh, the, the base of the natural algorithm. All right, so keep this in mind. What is the base of the uh, natural algorithm? It's the limit of this sequence one plus one of n to the power n. The limit of the sequence is the base of natural algorithm. So this is one of the most important limit in calculus. Okay. Example eight, here we have a sequence a n. The first term is one and the whole sequence is defined by a recurrence relation instead of an express formula. Okay, and suppose we know the limit of the sequence exists and the question is, what is the limit? All right, uh, we can try to write out the first several terms of the sequence. So we have the a1 is one, then a2 by definition is one over one plus a1, which is one. And a3 is one over one plus a2, right? So this is one plus one plus one. You see this thing, this one is a2. And then we can, of course, we'll keep writing. So a4 will be one over one plus a3. So that's one plus, one plus, uh, one plus one, right? Uh, this one, this is the thing, this is just a3. Okay, so then you see formulae. Formulae, uh, the, the limit, the limit a could be somehow be written as one over because just, we just follow the pattern. It's one over one plus one over one plus one over one plus one over one plus one over one, like this. Okay, so now we want to we have to figure out what is the limit, right? Okay, uh, well, here let's go back to uh, let's go back to this. Let's go back to this um, the recursive relation. So we have a n plus one. Let's copy here plus one over a n. Uh, one over one plus a m, right? Uh, the limit basically says when n gets very large, right? When n goes to infinity, the whole sequence, the whole sequence approach the number a. Okay, then we see uh, if I send n to infinity, let's say, okay, so this one will just approach the number a. And then you see this one will also approach to number a. Then um, it's kind of clear this part, then this part, then this part will approach the number one plus one of a. Uh, because the left-hand side and right-hand side are equal, uh, this tells us we should have this equality. Okay, so eventually we end up this equality. So let me rewrite here. So we have a, we get a equals one over one plus a, right? Okay, so from here, uh, also you see another way to see how we get this one. I say, okay, how we get this one. You can also see from here, uh, because this term, when you look at this, you say, hey, this is basically A itself, right? Just repeating the same pattern. This one is basically the A itself. So from here, we can also get A equals to one over one plus A. Okay, anyway, uh, from here, let's just solve A. We just multiply uh, A, one plus A on both sides. We get this equal one. And then we get an equation, so it's a squared plus one minus one equals zero, right? So this is a quadratic equation. And what we're gonna do is use a quadratic formula, right? So we say, okay, so by the quadratic formula, we get, by the quadratic formula, we get a equals uh, negative one plus or minus the square root of five, right? So one minus four. Okay, all right, so here you see, hmm. Uh, now we are facing two options. So option one is one half minus one plus the square five. And option two is minus one minus square five. So which one is the correct one? A sequence has only one limit. It cannot have two limits, right? Because when the whole sequence approach to a single number. Now here we have two options, one or two. So which one is the correct? So which one? 
which one is the is the correct limit? Uh, let's go back to uh, let's go back to uh, our sequence, right? If you look at the sequence right here, right? Uh, obviously, the sequence has to be positive, right? So the limit has to be not negative, right? Positive. Okay, because all the numbers are positive, and then we expect that the limit also at least to be non-negative, right? And the sequence of high number numbers cannot go to a negative number. And when you look at these two numbers, you say, okay, so this guy is less than zero, which is impossible. Therefore, we have only one option, which is this. So this is the limit. Okay, so we have con conclusion is the limit of this sequence, a n equals to the so square of five minus one divided by two. So finally, if we combine those examples together, and then we say, okay, we can write down uh, the definition, right? So this definition of limit, at least in a certain general way. We say, okay, suppose you have a sequence, right? So you have a sequence, and this is, suppose you have a sequence, this is the number A, right? All right, so if our sequence, uh, the limit is A, what does that mean? What does they mean the limit equals A? It just means when the index is large, the sequence approaches the number, right? For example, let's just uh, write a picture. So let's say this would be number A1, this is number A2. So probably uh, the A3 could, could be jumped to here, it doesn't matter. So you have A4 to the here, or you have, let's say, A5 to the here. This is A6, right? This is A7, and this is, let's say, this is A7, this is A8. But regardless of what, what we have is the overall chain, you see the sequence converge, right? Approach to the number A, right? Approach to the number A. So that's what happens. And if that's the case, we say, okay, so the sequence A, and also you see the cause is converging. The limit of A, or we say the sequence A n converges to the number A, right? approach the number A. So this is the, uh, the general way to say. Now, the most rigorous way to define limit is using the epsilon delta language that was introduced by Cauchy, a great mathematician in the uh, 18th century. But here, uh, we are not going to look at uh, those uh, more abstract languages. Okay. Now, uh, well, so far we have seen uh, examples that uh, of uh, sequences that have a limit. But of course, it could happen a sequence does not have a limit. Let's look at this example, right? So here we look at the sequences that does not have a limit. So first of all, let's just look at a sequence of natural numbers, right? If we say, okay, we start, this will be one, this will be two, this will be three, this is four, this is five. And clearly you see, okay, so the sequence will just go to, um, go to infinity, right? Go to infinity. It will never ever approach a number. So this one has no limit, no limit. Or we say the limit as n goes to infinity, the sequence does not exist, right? Does not exist. Now let's look at the example 10. So this is another example that does not have a limit. Uh, this is alternating sequence, negative one to the power n. And then we know if n is even, is one, right? So we can, we can write this sequence. This is negative one if n is odd, and this is one, n is even. So the whole sequence switches between one and negative one. Now let's see why this one does not have a limit. Okay. If we draw the picture, this is zero. It is not from negative one, right? So this is the first one, is a one. And then a two will be one. So this is a two, which is one. Okay, what happens is, uh, first is negative one, then it's one, and then it's negative one. So the whole thing switch between negative one, one, negative one, one. Therefore, it's, it's uh, kind of clear. You are not able to find the number such that the whole sequence goes to that number, right? So you remember for limit, what does limit mean? Means we need the whole sequence, right? We need to find a number such that the whole sequence goes to that number. You might think it's okay, it's, it's negative one limit. No, negative one is not limit because the, all the even number, all the even terms 
do not go to negative one. And one is not the limit either because all the order terms do not go to one, right? Remember limit means the whole sequence has to go to that number, has to approach, has to tend to that number. So from here we get the limit does not exist. N goes to infinity, negative one, the limit does, does not exist, okay? So this is one of the typical examples that uh, you are not able to find a number so that the whole sequence goes to that number. 